Today, I want to share with you 10 things that you must know about healing. And I want you to grab your note taker. I want to make sure that you share this with somebody who might be in need of a healing because these 10 things I believe are going to transform and change your life. And if you watch to the end, not only will we be giving you understanding about the ministry of healing, we're also going to pray that the sick be healed today. And I believe by faith that there's somebody who's going to be healed after hearing today's message. Number one is that healing is a part of the nature and character of God. Healing is not just what he does, it's a part of who he is. I love the names of God, Jehovah Nisi, the God of victory, Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. But in Exodus 15, he begins to introduce himself as the God who heals us, Jehovah Rapha. So once again, healing is not what he does, it's a part of who he is. It's a part of the nature of God to heal. It's a part of the character of God to heal. Number two, write this down. The will of God is not automatic though. All right. It must be sought for and it must be fought for by us. Now, there are so many promises in God's word concerning healing, but I want you to know that healing doesn't fall in your lap. You got to fight for this and you got to seek God for it and you got to move and walk by faith, not by sight. And, and hopefully this promise will manifest itself in your physical body and in your life. You know, my wife recently overcame um, stage three breast cancer. And one of the scriptures that we stood on for this 10 month, 12 month battle was Psalms 103, verse number three. And it says that God forgives all of our iniquities and he heals all of our sicknesses. And it is a promise from God. And so when I pray, I go to God and say, God, I believe that you are Jehovah Rapha, a God that heals me. And I stand on your word, no matter what I feel like, no matter what it looks like, no matter what the doctor has said, I believe that you are a God that heals all my diseases. All right. Number three, write this down. Jesus wasn't just a sin offering. He was also a sick offering. The covenant that God makes with us as born again believers, it includes healing. Healing is a part of the salvation package. The forgiveness of our sins and healing, it goes together inside of the salvation package. And that's important to know because many of us, we can believe for heaven. We've never seen heaven, but we just believe that when we accept Jesus, we're going to be on our way to heaven when our spirit leaves this body. But it's with that same boldness and tenacity that we should be able to believe God for healing because both of those things go together. When Jesus got on the cross, he didn't just pay the price for our sin. He also paid the price for our sickness. And the Bible says that by his stripes, 40 minus 1, 39 stripes. And most people believe that all sickness and disease comes from 39 different roots. And I love to say this, that what he took, you and I don't have to take. All right. Number four, write this down. Healing is a part of the salvation package. OK, so getting saved isn't just about making it to heaven. It's really about bringing heaven to the earth, okay? The word sozo doesn't just mean escaping hell. Inside of this word sozo, it means that nothing myth, there's nothing missing, nothing lacking, and nothing broken, meaning that this word sozo encompasses the word wholeness, including our healing, all right? Number five, write this down. A powerless Christian is a biblical contradiction, and it's important for you to know this, all right? This world doesn't need theory or talk. Come on, somebody. It needs an encounter with God. All right. So we are not just supposed to be people that read a lot, study a lot and know a lot. We're supposed to show a lot. We're not supposed to know a lot. We're supposed to show a lot. So the Apostle Paul himself says, I don't just teach with men's wisdom. I do it with the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's not something just for the apostles and the, and the preachers and the people who have titles behind their name It's for every born again believer. We have to understand that we are to walk in power. Number six, this is the sixth thing <laughs> that you need to know about healing is that healing is not something that you can earn. It is simply a grace from God. One of the biggest mistakes that people make as it relates to healing is that they feel like, well, if I pray more, I'll be healed. If I fast more, I'll be healed. If I live better, I'll be healed. If I live more holy, I'll be healed. And I think all of those things are important to the disciplines that we are uh, putting into our life to be more like Jesus. But it's not like this plus this equals a healing. 
And I think you need to remove the mathematical equation. And our job is to position ourselves under the grace of God, meaning that God sometimes will heal people that are not saved, heal people who don't live right, heal people who don't know anything, just because it is a grace of God. So you and I can't force the grace of God, but we can receive the grace of God. And our position is not to work for healing, but it's to position ourselves where we can receive the download of grace that he so freely gives out of his love. This is the seventh thing that you have to know. There is a mystery in healing that we must accept. There are times where we've seen God heal one person, but not another. They can be in the same meeting, all right? Um, we, there's times where we've seen God heal one part of a person's body, but not the other part of a person's body. There's been times when we see people go through a miraculous healing, but then unfortunately it comes back and, um, you know, they have that challenge all over again. And many times we can begin to question um, our Bible. We can question God. We can question what it's all about. But what I've learned in the healing ministry is that there is a mystery in healing. There is a place where you have to be humble enough to put your palms up and say, I don't get it. I don't understand it, and sometimes I don't even like it, but nevertheless, Lord, I trust you. I trust that your ways are higher than my ways, that you know more than what I know. I trust you that your word is forever settled in heaven, and it's not my job to heal. It's my job to use my authority. It's my job to believe you. It's my job to stand on your word, and at the end of the day, God, I put my hands up like this and I say, nevertheless, I trust you. And so you have to accept the fact that we cannot explain why um, why everything happens, why bad things happen to good people and why this person lived and this person died, or why, you know, God didn't come through for this. You know what? I don't understand it, but God, I still trust you for there is a mystery in healing. Number eight, use everything in your power to heal yourself. And this is a huge one. You, you got to grab hold of this one. Use everything. And I mean everything in your power to heal yourself. One of my mentors years ago, I'm talking about years and years ago, probably over 30 years ago, got hepatitis and had to go through chemotherapy and different things to kind of get over hepatitis. And he said that the Lord showed him a scripture in Psalms. Uh, I can't quote it right now, but in one translation it says, use everything in your power to heal yourself. And sometimes we do a really good job with the faith. Man, I'm believing God for a miracle. Man, I believe that God still heals. But we don't understand that faith without works is dead being alone. There is a supernatural side, but there is a natural side. And many times it's the natural side plus the supernatural side that equals the manifestation that you and I want. And sometimes we focus so much on the spiritual things that we don't do the natural things well, like eating right, exercising, getting great sleep, going to doctors. What I found out through our journey of overcoming sickness is that many times modern medicine doesn't know everything there is to be known. You can go to many doctors and they don't know what to do with you. And you can go to some homeopathic doctors or go to some people who are into functional medicine and they will use um, light therapy. They will um, uh, help you, you know, forgive things because they say 85% of sickness and disease that you and I face is psychosomatic. It's um, a hurt a trauma that's happened in our childhood that's opening the door to sickness and disease. It's many a times, it's really a not about the supernatural. It's about figuring out what vitamins you might need, how to drink more water, how to get better sleep how to um, going through counseling, getting over some of the trauma that you've had as a child. Certain doctors that I've spoken to talks about how your cells, they all have memory and they can remember things that maybe even mentally you can't bring up. Um, sometimes your neural pathways have created um, uh, thought patterns that are toxic and you need to really learn meditation and how to think on things that are pure and lovely and good rapport, um, just like Philippians tells us to. And many times it's the natural that in the supernatural together that makes your faith come alive. So I say that to say, we gotta use everything in our power that's godly, not anything that's ungodly, but everything that's godly to see healing manifest itself. My word for you today is don't give up. Don't you dare give up. Many times you feel like, well, I've been going on with this for five, 10, 15 years. I want you to know your breakthrough is right around the corner, all right? Number nine, um, we're not just called to be healed, We've also been called to heal the sick. And I think that's important for us to know that you haven't been called just to receive healing, but to distribute healing. 
When Jesus gives his disciples this command, he says to heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead and cast out demons. Freely you've received, freely give. It wasn't just to his disciples back then. It was to you and I today. We look at the ministry of Jesus and he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the enemy for God was with him. And you can say, well, that was Jesus. What has that got to do with me? It has everything to do with you. John 14, 12, it says, the works that I do shall you do also and greater works than these shall you do. So Jesus didn't come to show us how to be God. He came to show us how to be a man or a woman filled with the power of God. And last but not least, what I would want you to know in 10 things you must know about healing is that God still heals. Hebrews 13 and 8, it says that Jesus, listen, is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So if he healed back then, mm -mm, good news, he's still healing now. And I believe he wants to heal somebody today. You know, a few, a little while back, we received a word of knowledge that somebody was dealing with gastrointestinal issues. And uh, there was a young lady in our church that came forth, said for six years she's been dealing with abdominal pain and, and all kinds of things happening in her, um, in her intestines. And uh, we prayed for her. She felt the, a warmth, like a presence of the Lord come upon her. And she didn't think, man, she, she didn't think anything had changed. But the pain left her, and now she's been completely pain-free for two months after being bound for six years. And I want to share these a couple stories with you just so that faith can rise for what God wants to do. And I'm going to pray with you in just a moment. Um, we had somebody who had a mom who had um, an immune uh, deficiency and she was getting sick all of the time. And she just came to us and said, hey, can you pray for our mom? The next morning, the mom woke up, she had a sore throat. Sore throat was completely gone, felt completely better. You say, Pastor, that's a little thing. Hey, don't ever despise little things. We need to start celebrating the little things. And it's good to know that God doesn't want to just cleanse the leper, raise the dead. He also wants to heal you of acne. He wants to heal you of a sore throat. He wants to heal you of post-nasal drip and allergies. He wants to heal you. I believe God for even people who've had worn, um, worn glasses since they were in elementary school, that God can give you 20-20 vision. I believe God still heals. There was a young lady who had came to our church and um, she had been deaf in one ear for about a year. She was a flight attendant, wasn't even able to go up in planes any longer, so she had to resign. And she came to our church and the doctors told her um, she went through three months of therapy and there was nothing the doctors could do. They said, your hearing will always be 20%. And so you might as well get a hearing aid. That's the best we can do for you. Prayed for her and uh, her hearing came back. And then a couple of days later, I asked her how she was doing and it, it was worse. She said it came, um, her, the deafness came back and she was hearing sounds and distortions. And I said, I, I feel like it's spiritual because sometimes when healing leaves and comes back or it moves to different parts of the body, we know that it's a spiritual context. We pray for her again. And uh, a couple of weeks went by, she got water baptized. When she came out of the water, her ear completely opened up to where now she is completely restored in her healing. And it's 100% back to normal, exactly what it was even before sudden deafness came upon her. I don't know if you're hearing me today, that there was a girl who had a deaf ear, but now she hears. The deal is this, God still heals. There's a young man that I knew had a sickle cell trait. He was in Colorado in high altitude, and um, it, it basically triggered something in his body, and it started to attack his spleen. Had to go to the emergency room when he was in Colorado, and I saw him, and he was for two weeks just in serious pain. I prayed for him in a restaurant. You know, no worship team, um, no specific like presence of the Lord, or you know, nobody on the keyboard. We just prayed by faith. Two days later, he says the pain went away. He's been completely healed now for a couple of months. I just feel like we could go on and on with these stories, but for the sake of time, I won't. I want to pray for you today. And uh, the Lord showed me a couple of things that he wants to heal today, and I'm just going to speak them out. And if these um, bear witness with you, I want you to receive it by faith. I want to pray for a person who's been dealing with a migraine headache, and um, this has been going on for a while. I believe that God is healing you today in Jesus' name. I want to pray for someone today who's been dealing with a lot of shame and guilt. Uh, specifically, I hear the Lord saying uh, sexual shame. You just feel really bad about the things that you've done. I want you to leave that at the altar today and just say, Lord, I forgive me because you forgive me. And I believe that that's gonna close a door um, to sleeplessness and some other things that you've been dealing with in Jesus name. Um, I wanna pray for someone who's been having really, really, really bad sinus infections and this has been going on for a long time and you've just made this a part of your life in Jesus' name, we call you healed right now. I also see someone who's been dealing with a problem in their back. I see it like a bent back. I believe that God is straightening that right now. Even in your vertebrae, we call you healed in Jesus' name. 
And if you're dealing with any sickness or disease, would you just receive this prayer today? So in Jesus' name, we come against the spirit of sickness, disease, and we command it to leave your life. And even the things that have not been spiritual, but it's just been because of this is a fallen, broken world and there's been sickness, disease. And we just declare the healing power of God be over you right now in Jesus' name. Where there has been pain, we command it to go. Where there's been swelling and um, locking of joints, autoimmune disease, we call it healed right now. Memory loss, we call it healed right now in Jesus' name. Where there's been cancer, we break its power in Jesus' name. We call you healed. Even in your limp nodes, we call you healed right now in Jesus' name. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet, the tip of your fingers to the tip of your toes, we declare that you are healed by the stripes of Jesus. Amen. You receive that? You were healed today of anything, please reach out to us. Uh, we would love to hear from you. Um, in, our, in, in our notes, you'll see a lot of information about how to connect with us on social media and how to find more messages like these. And until next time, we want you to keep living by faith, walking by faith, and we'll see you real soon. God bless you.